But you shouldn't teach you how to drive, because if they criticize you, there's liable to be hurt feelings. Of course, if they don't, you're liable to wind up a rotten driver. Oh, goodness. Oh, uh, I suppose maybe I could uh, get you a professional teacher. That sounds like a job for Superman. Here he is now. Stop doing that. Don't tug on Superman's cape, young lady. <laughs> now, if it was a driving instructor you're looking for, you just found him. Oh, Rick, would you? Of course I will. And I'm going to disprove Leslie's theory that people who love you don't make good instructors. Picking you? No. Nope. This is a surprise. Oh, good. I'll come by and give you a lift to the club, since I know you don't have a car to tool around in these days. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm a nice guy, no matter what anybody says. I, I agree. And I'm also anxious to see you back in that club, singing your heart out. Well, don't be too anxious. I'm not ready for public performances yet. Well, hasn't Kelly been helping you? Yeah, he's been trying to. He's trying to talk me into performing with sheet music in my hand. I don't uh, think that's a very good idea. Why not? Singing is singing, isn't it? Yes, darling. And amateur is amateur. I think I would rather wait till I know the lyrics if it's all the same to you. Well, far be it from me to give advice to talent. But there is something I can give you some advice on. I was sure you'd come up with something. Now, this is important. Jeff told me that Mark asked you to come in for your final checkup. And you refuse to go. Boy, you know, word really travels fast in this family, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's right, I did. Well, that's stupid, you bozo. Now, look, you can't neglect your physical health. You ought to know that. You come from a family of doctors. Rick, don't nag me. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so do I. And I don't like it. Did I ask for your blessing? No, but I'm giving my opinion. Now look, why don't you do yourself and Mark a favor? Tell him why you broke up with him. No. Now, come on, I've explained all of that to you. Yes, you did, because you're afraid of what Mary Ellen might do. But that's irrational. So is Mary Ellen. And so are you. Don't you realize the torture you're putting that guy through? Torture? From what I hear, he's taken the whole thing pretty much in stride. Well, you heard wrong. You've hurt that guy about as much as one human being can hurt another, and it's needless. Can we stop this right now? You're not going to change my mind. I don't think I've ever met anybody who's as proud of being pig-headed as you are. It runs in the family. Uh-oh. I think we ought to think about going to the club, okay? You came by to give me a ride, not to nag me. Well, actually, I came by to do both. Settle for giving me a lift, Rick. That's all I need right now. I'll get my coat. Yes? Uh, how long a layover in New York? All right. Thank you very much. I guess you know that I'm off to the Caribbean. Yes, I heard. Well, Steve said he'd have to check it out with you. He did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Is it all right with you? I told him it was. Thank you. Rick, may I ask you something? Only if it has something to do with line of duty. It does. Okay, then ask. My future here in general seems to be hanging by a thread, but if by some miracle Steve decides to keep me on, will you still be willing to work with me? Or will the fact that Leslie hates me close that door to me? She doesn't hate you, Monica. She pities you. I think I'd rather be hated than pitied. Well, I don't think you have much of a choice in the matter, so uh, why don't you take what you can get and just be grateful for it? That's about what I've done all my life. Try not to sound martyred, Monica. I know it's a temptation, but uh, it's a right you haven't earned. You don't think I've been hurt? Well, you probably have. An arsonist sometimes gets caught in his own fires, but uh, that doesn't make him a martyr. Do you hate me? 
Don't be so anxious to be hated, Monica. I feel about the same way that Leslie does right now. I feel sorry for you. Whatever I did, I did because I loved you. I don't want to hear that word from you. Sorry. Has uh, Steve told you what your chances are of staying here at General Hospital? No. He doesn't want to decide anything until I get back from my trip. He says he's too angry to think about it objectively right now. Well, you can hardly blame him. I'm not allowed to blame anyone for anything, am I? No, you're, uh, you're not in the best position to blame anyone for anything. Anyway, what I'm hoping is that while I'm gone, Steve will think about it and realize that I'm a good doctor. And understand that my work is just about all I have left. Maybe you'll look at it that way, Monica. I don't know. But if you think I'll go to bat for you on this, forget it. Whether or not you have a future at the hospital is something you're going to have to settle with Steve. I'm out of it. Okay, Jeff thinks some memory's off. Because you had the car checked out the day before the accident. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't mean they checked the brakes. Yeah, but I'd just been down to Charlie's garage. I talked to the mechanic who worked on the car, and he said the brakes were in perfect condition when I left the shop. That was the day before the accident. The day before. You know, a lot of things aren't making sense. For one thing, there's something very wrong about Terry's relationship with Mary Ellen since the accident. Well, like how? Well, it seems like um, they're afraid of each other. Now, has Terry said anything to you about Mally that seemed uh, unusual? Uh, no. Not that I can think of. About it. You know, Rick, I don't know what's going on. But I seem to get the same reaction from you and Leslie. Reaction to what? About the subject of Terry. Like you both know something I don't. Is that true? All I said was, you're talking to the wrong person. Why don't you talk to Terry about it? I see. Well, in that case, maybe... Maybe I'll have to get to the right one. Inviting you to join Barbara Walters and me tonight on the ABC Evening News. Danger lurks in the wings Sunday. Actors are terrorized by a ghost, and there's a chance the show may not go on. Unless Nancy Drew can solve the mystery of the haunted theater. Then the six million dollar man risks being called a traitor to flesh out an espionage ring. Follow the action Sunday starting at 7, 6 Central and Mountain. Now stay tuned for the education. Just in time, before you came, my time was running low. I was lost, a losing dice. I was lost, a losing dice were tossed. Boy, that's what it is. It's a losing battle. Hey, it sounded great to me. What do you know? You're only a brother. Well, what kind of way is that to talk? You know, I've listened to the best of them. Jenny Lind and Nellie Melvin, good old Amelia Earhart. <laughs> you nut. What are you doing here, anyway? You come to sponge a meal. Mm-hmm. Well, we're having salad. And, uh, salad. Well, I'm glad you warned me. I'm gonna carry out my original plans and go to Leslie's house. <laughs> Look, I, um, I just stopped by to tell you that Jeff won't be home tonight. Oh. It's happened. Heather Grant went into convulsions. Convulsions? Oh, Lord. 
Was someone with her when it happened? Mm-hmm. Jeff was with her. Oh. You see, Gina found out that uh, Jeff was the real father. And she asked him if he would try and convince Heather that uh, she should let them take the baby. And? Well, apparently he did. He was leaving to get Gina when the convulsions hit. I'm going to the hospital. Jeff cannot be alone at a time. Whoa, like whoa. Now, wait a minute. If there was anything I could do, don't you think I would have stayed there? Now, they've got Heather under deep sedation. They can't even move for another 12 hours. Well, that's all the more reason why I should be there. But 12 hours is like an eternity at a time like this. Aside from what's happening to Heather, his child's life is in the balance. Okay, now, trust me, Terry. I mean, granted that Jeff is going through a rough time, but he doesn't need any company right now. I mean, with the situation with Monica and the trouble with Heather, all the comforting in the world isn't going to help him. So what do you say we give him a little space, okay? Okay.